Peter Engman, Permanent Secretary of the Swedish Academy. Thank you for talking to us. Could we begin by you telling us who's received the 2010 Nobel Prize in Literature? Uh, the 2010 Nobel Prize in Literature has been given to the Peruvian author Mario Vargas Llosa. And why did the Nobel Committee award the prize to him? Well, uh, it actually is awarded by the entire Academy. But uh, no, because this is one of the, the great Latin American, even Spanish-speaking uh, authorships in, in the Spanish-speaking world. Um, and he has he was one of the people sort of responsible for the, the boom in Latin American literature during the 60s and 70s uh, with a number of masterpieces, starting with his, his first book, uh, the, uh, the Time of the Hero, I think it's called in, in, in English, uh, when he was just 25 years old and continued to produce a number of very, very uh, respected and, I mean, excellent works of fiction. So tell us a bit more about the author and more about the major themes that he explores in his work. Well, uh, Mario Vargas Llosa, he's 74 years old. He's, he's born and raised in, in Peru. He was something of a boy genius, as I mentioned, starting writing. He wrote, it, wrote his uh, first book when he was some 25 years old. Uh, he's been part of the literary boom in Latin America. And he is uh, basically a storyteller, a narrator but he is also a, a very, very special storyteller that has evolved the literary waves of, of telling stories. They are often very complex in composition, his books. Uh, he's masterful when it comes to dialogue, shifting time planes and shifting persons, always going for the big picture. This is not, this is not a, 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 an author that, that drills a hole through reality and calls it the world. He, he is, he's going for that elusive thing called the total novel. Uh, so, uh, and the principal themes, I would say one of the important themes is uh, breaking free, rebellion, uh, fighting against oppression in some kind, breaking free and then defeat. Uh, so he's, he's, he's uh, talking about both rebellion, making the rebellion you understand why these people had to do what they did. You understand it. it. It seems inevitable. And then again, he paints a picture of their defeat, because his books often end in defeat, where you also understand why defeat was almost inevitable. So he, he is uh, capable of holding several thoughts in his head at the same time. Uh, he's working with, with, with a big panorama, with many, many characters in his books. I, one of his books, uh, Conversations in the Cathedral, I think there is 100 plus characters in that book. So, so you are not getting a narrow view, you are getting a sort of a bird's eye view of, of, of Latin America and part of its dilemma. And he's, he's not someone who's just restricted to the novel. He has, he has a range of literary styles. Yes, he's, he's a very versatile author. He has not just written these very big books uh, grounded in different ways in Latin American history. He's, write, he's tried almost virtually all genres. He's written, I mean, uh, postmodern comedies, erotic fiction, so, books that remind you of, of, of whodunit. Uh, he's writing essays. Uh, chronicles, journalism. His first, uh, he started writing uh, by working as a teenage journalist uh, back in Peru, running around on crime scenes and so on. He has never really left journalism. He has been reporting from uh, both Gaza and Iraq. So he is a very multi-talented man. And so to the un uninitiated reader, where would you recommend they begin? Uh, to the uninitiated reader, I would uh, recommend The Feast of the Goat, which is his book about the Dominican uh, Republic and the assassination of, of the dictator, the, the old long-standing dictator Rafael Trujillo. And it, it's a, on one hand, it's a masterful narrative in the tradition that he has evolved with, with uh, complicated uh, composition, where you have uh, people are different strands of the story are woven into each other. You have different time planes, you have different characters on the one hand. On the other hand, it's, it's a very exact and chilling book on the inner workings of a dictatorship. Not, not only the, the thing that dictators do when they sort of kill and torture and censor people, but also about moral corruption, the moral corruption of dictatorship.
And so, so do you have to be polit politically active to be Nobel worthy? No, no, not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, um, but, but just to, to say, but how, how does his work fit in with the, with the, the statutes of the will where it's um, outstanding work in an ideal direction? I, I think it actually fits. Uh, he, he has been working in this old tradition of, of say, even Victor Hugo and onwards with, you know, uh, man of letters also being men of action. He, he believes in improving the world. He believes in fiction and the power of fiction to improve the world. And, and if that's not uh, an ideal direction, I don't know. Thank you very much, Peter England. Thank you.